for the day that you have made and we rejoice and we are glad in it god we are so thankful for the fact that we can be outside in the beauty of your creation and worship you god we pray uh, for this service god what a privilege it is to have 12 people baptized this morning declaring their allegiance to you and showing us that they are committed to you 100 percent God, we ask that you be glorified in everything that is said this morning, everything that is done and sung. We pray that you'd speak in and through Pastor Ryan as he brings us your word. And we just pray that you'd be glorified this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. I am particularly glad to be here this morning. I love being out in the open air and um, just observing all the things that God has created and being thank- thankful, being aware that uh, we have a great God who is our creator. So why don't we all stand and we're going to sing and we're going to celebrate a little bit this morning and give God the praise that is due his wonderful name. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. is 
Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. Jesus, my Redeemer.
church. It's so good to see each and every one of you this morning as we worship our risen Savior and as we celebrate the work that he's done in 12 people's lives this morning. Well, that song we just sang, if it's true, what an amazing song. What an incredible song. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus, now and evermore is my plea. The chains are released. I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. But how has our sin been defeated? How are our chains released? How can we sing those words this morning, I am free? Well, we know that this morning many people have never experienced this 
this freedom. And those of us who have, we often find ourselves after a brief spiritual high back down in the valley, struggling with the same sins over and over again. This morning, we're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 6 and look at really briefly verses 1 to 5. Because the very first followers of Jesus Christ struggled with the same things that we struggle with still today. And the answer, the answer to our, our freedom, the reason that we can sing these words and that they're true, God tells us the reason is in experiencing and remembering and celebrating baptism. This morning, as we, we said, we, we, we're going to have the opportunity to celebrate 12 baptisms that have already happened. Isn't that amazing? These baptisms actually already happened inwardly in these lives. And they're about to demonstrate what happened inwardly, outwardly to the rest of us. And today our task is, as worshipers, as participants, as family and friends who've gathered here this morning, our, our task is to reflect on our own baptisms or perhaps today our lack of one as we face an unceasing war against us of sin in our lives. And just like when you go to a, a wedding, those who ha are, are married already, just like when you go to a wedding and you're reminded about your own union, as you see those vows being exchanged, you're reminded of the state of your union in, in that moment, whether it was 50, 20 years ago, or even last year. And so in the same way at baptisms, Christians are reminded either how far we have drifted or remained in God's truth of the transformational event in our lives, the most important transformational event of our lives, or we'll be reminded this morning of its absence. And so would you pray with me as we go really briefly to these five verses? Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity that we've had already to worship you, to declare your goodness, your praise, the work that you've accomplished through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you that we can do it together as your church in your creation, overlooking this beautiful lake and river that you made. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit now would open our, 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 our ears and our hearts to your word. We pray that we would be able to remember, experience afresh what baptism is. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible and you want to follow along, we're in Romans chapter uh, 6, verses 1 to 5. Or you can listen. And this is what we read. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united to him in a resurrection like his. Amen. This is God's word. A reoccurring theme in this, this letter to the church in Rome is their confusion on how to deal with the reality of sin and temptation and God's grace. How do those things continue to work in the life of the believer? And God teaches us through Paul in the letter of Romans from chapters 1 to 3 that everyone, all of us, were dead in our sin. That we were dead in our sin, meaning that all of us were or still are slaves to sin. Sin was or is our master. And like dead people, we had no means of escape from this. We had no means of resuscitation, no means for resurrection. But Jesus, we're then told that salvation, salvation is not attained by, by keeping God's rules, as good as God's rules are for us, but rather God's rules revealed the holiness and the glory of God. It also revealed to us our inability to keep them, thus exposing our need for a savior, for God's plan for our salvation. We can reflect this morning and know that even the people who think they can follow God's rules fail. And they fail because for those who strive to keep God's rules, to keep the law, 
often it is for the wrong reasons. And in fact, not often, all of the time, our motivation is flawed in doing this. We indulge our pride when we think our salvation can be found in keeping the rules. These are the religious and the ritualistic people. Then there are those who are, are the people who uh, sometimes you see at Niagara Falls, right? You see that rock, that, that sign that says, keep off the rocks. And there's, there's that thing inside of us that wants to defy that sign. And so we climb up on the rocks to get that perfect selfie at the precipice uh, where the water is flowing over the edge. And this morning, we're not talking about man's rules here. We don't mean this literally, but we're talking about our our hedonism, our desire to go against and be contrary to what God has asked us to do, right? Those who ignore God's rules and pursue our own pleasure. And it's true that so often we fall into both of these these categories simultaneously. We, We struggle with both of these things. And in Romans chapter 5, we learn the origins of of how we got to this this terrible place. We learn where our captivity to death and sin came from. It came through the first man, Adam. When, When a man and a woman created in the image of God, who were created to represent God by God, when they willfully rebelled against their creator and their calling to do this, to enjoy his presence forever. Adam had previously been told before this that the penalty of disobedience would be death. And because we, each one of us, are descendants of Adam, that means that we are heirs. We have an inheritance, but it's not a good inheritance. It's an inheritance to captivity. It's an inheritance to debt, to sin and death. And so we have to say today that that all of us, all of humanity is now born, stillborn spiritually. We are stillborn spiritually, spiritually dead at our conception. And sure, each one of us sure of our eventual physical death. And so Adam, and by extension us, lost that communion that God desired to have with us, that fellowship that God desired to have with us in his presence. And we gained an appointment with death. The confusion and the lie begins for Christians who who say that they receive this free gift of grace from God. The confusion can can become if my spiritual deadness demands a savior outside of myself, if my sin did uh, did nothing except for uh, show God's goodness and graciousness, if it only highlighted God's holiness and, and justice then surely my sinning is okay, that that I'm free to keep on sinning and God will be free to continue to forgive me. This is not true. This is is a lie that many believed then and, and still today, some knowingly and some unknowingly. And while our failing, our sinning will certainly be a reality until Jesus Christ's second coming, Paul says, no, this is, this is not how we are to live. God says, no, this is not how he wants us to live. We need to remember today as we go through these verses that the first step in our new identity, in our new life in Christ is our funeral. The first step is our funeral. We must die again. But this death is a different death. Verses one and two. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? We must go from death to death. We must go from death to death. Death was our condition. It was all of our conditions. And it was completely God's saving grace through the work of Jesus Christ to bring us from death and sin to new life in him. But there's another component here that we so often miss. There is another death that happens in between this. It is we were dead in our sins. We were dead in our sins. But now in Christ, we are dead to sin. We are dead to sin. Do we see the difference between those two things? Right, The first one, we, we can't die for our sin and survive the just wrath of God. Jesus does that on our behalf, in our place. But we still need to, today, understand that we have gone from death to death or that we need to go from death to death. So we say, we can say today that Jesus died for our sins so that we can die to our sins. Jesus died for our sins so that we can die to our sins. And baptism helps us to understand this better. Verse three, 
do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death, into his death? But did you die? But did you die? There's this meme floating around on social media. I'm not sure if any of you have seen it or not. And if you don't know what a meme is, it's, it's just a picture or a video clip that's taken out of context to illustrate a point or make a point about something. I have no clue where this clip came from and I'm not endorsing it, but it's a clip of two guys sitting at a table with an older lady and they're complaining to her how they've been beat up, complaining about how rough their day was. And every time they complain, she responds to them with this. But did you die? But did you die? And it's actually what Paul and what God is saying to us this morning to the Christian who justifies their sin or is stuck in sin patterns. But did you die? But did you not die? Let's back things up a little bit. And there's this assumption that we understand what baptism is here in Romans. And so let's just clarify that. The word baptism in its context and throughout uh, the whole of the New Testament means immersion. It means immersion. To immerse something is to be completely enveloped in it, completely united to it. And so when we go under the water, right, when we are put completely under the water, we are as close as we can possibly get to the water. And that's what Jesus wants us to demonstrate outwardly what's happened inwardly. It means that we are completely united to him, that we can receive his work on the cross as our own when we become united to him in that. But we so often forget that we've been united to him in his death also. God has asked these candidates that are getting baptized today, and he asks us to demonstrate that inward reality once to the church. It's, it's them declaring, I have decided to follow Jesus, that I have already been united to him. And it's the church saying, doing the baptism, yes, you have. And because we're also united to Jesus Christ, we are united together. That is what the church is. The church is a people baptized into Jesus Christ, death and life. It's just so often we leave out the death part. We kind of skip the identifying with Jesus' death and go right to identifying with his resurrection, the new life part, which is the best part of our being united to Christ. But in our battle against sin today, we handicap ourselves. We handicap ourselves by not remembering that Jesus died for our sins so that we can die to our sin. And so today, we are either dead in our sins or we are dead to sin. That means we have freedom over it. Sadly, many reject Jesus Christ, work for them through his life, death, and resurrection. And sadly, many of us Christians forget or neglect our own funerals, right? Our own funerals. We forget that repentance is the first fruits in our being regenerated by the Holy Spirit, the first step in our baptism, our union to Jesus Christ, that he gives us, even if it's in the smallest degree, a God-given desire to turn from our sin and towards God. It is the beginning of this. It's not that sin magically loses its allure. It's, it's, It's not that all of a sudden it's super easy to deny sin in our lives, but in being united to Christ, Suddenly, upon our salvation and continuously throughout our sanctification, are being made holy by Jesus. The Spirit of God leads us to places where we can finally kill sins in our lives by overcoming temptation. We are given the opportunity to lose the taste for sin when we remember. It's this amazing tool we have when we remember our funeral and our baptism. That Jesus made a way for us to be dead to sin. You're dead to me. When someone says that you're dead to me, those are are powerful words, right? When someone says that a person is is dead to them or that thing is is dead to them, it means that person or that thing that that they that we cease to acknowledge their their existence, that they're we cease to acknowledge their, their influence over us any longer. Because of being united to Jesus, we are free to say to our temptation, to our sin, you're dead to me. We are free to choose obedience 
over disobedience to life over death. As John Owen famously said, be killing sin or sin will be killing you. Being united and immersed to Jesus Christ makes this possible to choose the greater, God's presence, over the lesser, our sin. And so the next time you feel in the the heat of that moment that you cannot overcome the temptation that you're fighting, tell that sin, tell Satan, you are dead to me. You're dead to me. It doesn't end with our funeral. But in our being dead to sin, we are then made alive to God in baptism. And it plays out like this in verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Are you dead in sin or have you died to sin? Everyone was dead, but did you die? But did you die? Our immersion with Christ in his death means our time is served. Our penalty is paid. It means God sees us as he sees his son, enabling us to live a new life in Christ. And it enables us to be raised spiritually now and also physically when he comes again. There is no longer death or condemnation hanging over our heads. And yet you say, I say, I'm stuck. I'm spinning my tires in endless cycles of remorse and repentance. And and yes, God is gracious. We will never be perfect in this life. But he doesn't want you to stay there. He doesn't want me to stay there. And nor do we need to. Just remember this morning that we are prone to spiritual amnesia, to spiritual forgetfulness. Remember today, as you hear these testimonies, remember your own funeral. As you fight the battle against this world, against our flesh, and against the devil. Sin and death is no longer a part of the Christian's identity. We are free from it. But sometimes we don't act like it because we forget. We forget that we can die to sin, that we have died to sin. And so, immersion into Jesus Christ is comprised of these three elements. A funeral now. But did you die? We can tell temptation, sin, the devil, that he is dead to us. And we can experience victory. Praise God. The second component is new life now. Our dead spiritual lives have been resurrected. We can begin to experience God's presence in our lives. And finally, and the part that we look forward to the most, it is new life in eternity. That is a physical resurrection when Jesus Christ descends, when he comes again for the second time time and he gives us a new resurrected body and we will be free we will be free from temptation there will be no more corruption or death but did you die but did you die were you not united to jesus christ in his death so that we can choose obedience over sin so that we can receive his his comfort And so the next time we're struggling and and we go to a brother or sister in Christ and we're sharing that, or I come to you and I'm sharing that, let's, let's commit together to saying this, to reminding each other as we share our struggles and our, our suffering, let's say to each other, but did you die? But did you die? Is it hard? Yes. Is still sin still enticing to our flesh? Of course it is. But freedom over sin is possible today in Jesus Christ. Let's remember our identity in his death. It is a daily, it is even hourly, even moment by moment reality that we need to do as we walk with Christ. But did you die? But did you die? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your word this morning. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you made a way for us. For us on the cross to to be moved from being dead in sin to being able to be dead to sin father would we walk in that reality today and this week and the next week and the next month and the next year father we pray now that as we as we sing the words to this song again yet not i but through christ in me that we would be reminded afresh of our funeral and also of our spiritual resurrection and the physical resurrection that is to come And as we hear the testimony of the the men and the women and the young people who you have transformed their lives, would we again be reminded of our funerals and our new life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
We're going to be singing verse 3 as we uh, just go to the Lord for some of the moment. everybody can uh, can see again if you need to move to get a better view uh, feel free to do that we're going to introduce Easton Sove he's our first uh, candidate this morning so I'm going to hand over the mic to Easton he's going to share his testimony with us hello everybody my name is Easton Sove and I'm 13 and I've decided to get baptized today I was born into a Christian family that loved the Lord very much my family taught me about Jesus how he died to save us and that we all need him I was saved when I was nine, and just last year at this very same day, I started to really think about baptism. I soon came to the realization that I was ready to be baptized in God's name. For 1 Peter 3.21 says this, Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Baptism is a step of faith, and I am ready to take that step. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Easton. Well, Easton, upon hearing your testimony, I'm excited to ask you a few questions to encourage those here of your faith in Jesus Christ. Do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving of wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? 
Yes. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and to be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. All right, Easton, well, it's, in our, it's our privilege then to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll move back a bit. My name is Joy. God's timing is perfect, and so here I am this day to be baptized before a crowd of witnesses. Was it on? Okay. Uh, my Riverside Church family. I do this out of obedience to Jesus' command to tell and proclaim that I want to continually continue following Jesus as my Lord and Savior with his help. I was born into a religious family who attended All Saints Anglican Church regularly, myself as a toddler, and I've continued that tradition to this day. God's grace, his overflowing favor and forgiveness is amazing, and the lifeline of my soul, which is in a song I love to sing. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I carry everything to him in prayer. God tells me, come to him when I am weary and heavy laden, and he will give me rest. Thanks be to God, he does. I begin my day reciting the 23rd Psalm and putting on the full armor of God. I continue with my daily bread devotion. I never fully understand why I, that I was a slave to sin until Pastor Earl Walsh visited my home in the fall of 73 on Port Sydney Road. My husband Art and I were newlyweds. And he gave me a New Testament Bible, the greatest is love, and shared the need for salvation so that I may spend eternity in heaven with Jesus, my Savior. I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior. But turning 70, having both hips replaced successfully at Royal Victoria Hospital in Barrie uh, last January and then in June, and having a stroke on December the 10th, and surviving with only... Uh, left upper vision damage, but unfortunately, it would not allow me to pass my driver's eye test. So I no longer drive, and I'm, I'm fine with that. God knows that best, and he has a life plan for each of us. Through all of these events, I became wholly dependent on God each day for guidance, for deliverance, knowing and sensing God is has is ever over my life and he knows what's happening he's ever present thanks be to god for such a comfort god called me to be baptized so i spoke with pastor brian and here i am today to do just that so joy i'm just going to ask you a few questions do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive in Christ? Yes, I do. Amen. Have you confessed your sin, expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Amen. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and led by his spirit to follow Jesus Christ and to be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes, I do. Amen. Well, we're now going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Lucy Gibbish. Hi. Um, my name is Lucy Gibbish. And I'm 14. Here's my testimony. Um, I was born into a Christian home, going to church every Sunday, and just being the average Christian kid. Little me loved God. Of course, not in the mature way that an adult would, but I would love—I would call him my BFF, and I prayed to him every day. I don't remember much about my faith when I was younger, but I know that I knew who God was. That's weird. Fast forward a few years, where we end up at the end of 2022. 
A few things happened in my life with relationships and mental stuff, and I started to fall into depression. I had anxiety and considered myself part of the LGBTQ plus community. I was also having suicidal thoughts. I felt alone and that nobody really cared. I started to question God, and I got to the point where I, when I would think about myself dying, I knew I wouldn't go to heaven. The crazy part about this is even when I was doubting, even when I was living in sin, even when I felt completely alone, God was still with me. In the back of my mind, he was still whispering to me and calling me to stay with him. It was a mental battle for sure. Things got better mentally for me at, in the start of 2023, but then got worse again shortly after. And I think that it was because I was seeking healing and friendships and not God. And God's healing, only God's healing can last. After a while, I started to get better and a bit closer to God. Then, in around June of 2023, someone important to me told me that they were thinking about not being Christian anymore. And I don't know, I don't know, it did something to me. I started looking through all the stuff, reading through the Bible, Revelation specifically, trying to prove that God does exist and that I could, so that I could prove to them that He is real. I even wasn't. I even wasn't the best in my faith at the time. And I was like, oh, I gotta show them. They have to know, they have to know. And while I was doing all of that stuff, it helped me realize how much we really need God in our lives and how important he is to us, even when we, realize, even when we don't realize it. It's crazy how someone telling me that they weren't Christian anymore brought me so much closer to God. And I still do hope that they will find God again and see how important he is and how much he loves us and cares for us. And yeah, overall, things got better gradually and I had, and I had started thinking about God more, and I wasn't doubting him. I never had a moment where I was like, oh, I'm all good now, because of a miracle or something that God did. And for some people, that's the case, and that's wonderful and amazing. But that wasn't God's plan for me. Gradually, God did heal me and brought me out of my depression, then anxiety, and continually, he, and continually has brought me just closer to him. This past summer, I went to the SALT program at Wajidwin, which is amazing and, I, and also brought me so much closer to God. I'm so excited to continue to know him more and more. Amen. Amen, Lucy. Well, upon hearing your testimony, we just have three questions for you. Number one, do you acknowledge that you were dead in your sin, deserving wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and to be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen. Well, then it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Xander Evans and my nephew, a privilege of being his uncle. Why don't you share your testimony? Maybe. Hi, my name is Xander and I grew up in a Christian family. Sometime when I was five, my parents helped me ask Jesus into my heart. As I got older and more recently, I realized I want to make my faith my own. And I don't think I took my faith seriously. So lately I've been trying to grow my faith in relationship with God and I'm trying to overcome temptations in my life and I want everyone to know that I am saved that is why I'm being baptized and the verse that has been impactful in my life is Romans 10 verse 9 whoever believes with their heart and acknowledges with their mouth shall be saved. Amen. Well, Xander, upon hearing your confession of faith, I just have a few questions for you. Do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sins, deserving God's wrath, and that through his unmerited grace, he made you alive through faith in Jesus Christ? Yes. Awesome. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Amen. And will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and to be on his mission and to fellowship with his church? Yes. Well, it's our privilege to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
All right, it's our privilege to invite Doug Prophet up next to share what God has done. My name is Doug. I'm getting baptized today out of obedience to Jesus' command. And to show everyone I want to follow Jesus. He has given me the strength to walk as a new person because he has died for my sins. I've read Matthew 6, verse 36, and lived by it daily. It reads, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has troubles of its own, but knowing that Christ has risen and is coming again, we have no fear. Amen. Thank you, Doug. Just three questions for you upon hearing your testimony. Uh, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin and deserving of wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen. Well, then it's our privilege, Doug, to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to invite Cindy to share her testimony. Hi, everybody. My name's Cindy. I'm here to show how God answers prayers. We started to attend Riverside last year and felt the Holy Spirit lead us into a deeper relationship with Jesus. I was watching a program a few years ago about how God answers prayers, and I decided to start a prayer journal to write down my prayers to God and have filled many pages with our kids, families, finances, health, and just living in this world. I also prayed about finding a Bible-based church and to be baptized. Well, I can put a date beside number four. It, it will be September 15th. And that God has answered my prayer. I'd like to share my favorite, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and it's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. To trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. Well, Cindy, upon hearing your testimony, I'm excited to ask you a few questions. The first is, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. Amen. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Amen. And Cindy, will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Amen. Well, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Excited to have Addie come up next and share her testimony. And Addie actually has her dad in here who's going to be part of the baptism as well. So Addie, go ahead. Her testimony's all wet. And, yeah, you, all right. Oh, she memorized it. All right, perfect. Hi, my name is Addie, and I'm 12 years old. And today I have come to be baptized as a step of obedience to Jesus. At a young age, I, at a young age, I um, understood what Jesus did for me and... At the age of eight, I accepted him into my life. Um, and throughout the years, I've had learned to trust him. Like this year, when the Lord told my, me and my family that I should leave the only school I've ever been to and be homeschooled. And it has gone well so far, and I hope it continues this way. I've been going to Riverside for about a year now. 
and I have made some good friends, and I am glad I came because it has brought me closer to God. And I am here today to be baptized as a step of obedience to him. Thank you. Amen, Addy. Well, upon hearing your testimony, just three questions for you. One, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving of wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and to be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen, Addy. Well, then, upon those answers, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tyler. Uh, this is Tyler. He's going to share his testimony. Hi, my name is Tyler Peterson. Uh, my wife Linda and I have two beautiful children, Kenneth, who is five, and Elizabeth, who is two. My mother Peggy is here today with the kids, and my wife is unable to be here today, but sends her love and support. I've always needed Jesus, and I am elated to finally start my walk with him. This baptism will be my first embodied act, showing to us all that I choose to follow Jesus Christ. I was not saved by one particular event, but slowly over many years of God's work in my life. So the Christian life is new to me. I did not go to church very often, and when I did, pride always kept me from believing what I heard. Dead in my sin, I failed time and time again. Completely lost, I allowed my sinful nature to rule my life. Not knowing where I was going or understanding at the time, there was no hope without faith in Jesus Christ. In scripture we read John 14 through 7, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I know now that Jesus is the Son of God that lived the perfect life and died on the cross. He was res resurrected on the third day, defeating sin and death. And I am still a sinner, but through prayer and belief in Jesus, I know I will be made new. I used to worry that the Christian sent a Christ-centered life would take away my time for family, appreciation for the world, and I was wrong. Knowing the world is God's creation does not take away its beauty, but amplifies it. Loving God above all does not take away love for others, but increases it. Through Christ's love, I have become a better husband, father, brother, son, and friend to those around me, and I hope to reflect God's love to my children so they can come to know the Father's love as I have. Scripture says, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them all, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, to baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. teaching them to observe that I have a com what I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I choose to obey Christ's words when he said, John 3, uh, 3 verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said this to you. You must be born again. Praise the Lord. Well, Tyler, thanks for sharing your testimony. And upon hearing that, I just want to ask you a few questions. Do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving God's wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, you have been made alive in Jesus Christ? Yes. 
Awesome. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Awesome. And will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ, to be on his mission, and to fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen. Well, it's our privilege to now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's our privilege to invite Rahulio up next. I didn't say his name properly, but there's a role in the R that I can't do. Uh, maybe he'll say it for us here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rogelio. I'm from Mexico. I was raised in a Catholic home. When I was little, I felt very close to God, and I was like going to church. I learned from my parents from my young age that it's important to have a good relationship with God. Uh, I got all the rest of question in looking for answers in philosophy, I felt religion couldn't answer. And that part ultimately brought me away from God a little. And as I got older, it became clear to me the importance of building a relationship with Christ and how I needed them in, in my life. Now finding this church, I feel I can grow more in that and live my life fully for Jesus for the better of my family. I'm, I'm getting baptized today because I want to follow the word of God and for it be a fresh start in my commitment to Christ. Amen, Julio. Well, upon hearing your testimony, we just have three questions to ask you. Uh, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving of wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. Yeah. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen. Well, upon hearing those answers, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. privilege to welcome Abby to share her testimony. Hi, my name is Abby. I grew up here in Huntsville. Although my family were not believers, we attended an Anglican church semi-regularly, mostly for big events and holidays. I heard of Jesus' name and his stories, but had no understanding of who he truly was or what he'd done for me. Angry and prideful, I left that church at a young age, vowing to find the truth about life, with a capital T. At that point, I believed I could cross Jesus off my list of possible answers, and regularly scoffed at Christianity. In the years to come, my adolescence was filled with terrible decisions and extremes. Trauma in my early childhood had opened wounds that caused mental torment, which I was also determined to heal. I went down every possible path looking for God, every religion, every philosophy, until I ended up with a mix of conflicting ideologies that made up my truth. My spirituality led me into witchcraft, where I became involved in divination, talking to spirits, worshiping fallen angels as gods, and calling myself a god. In my lost state, I foolishly felt I was healing, despite the spiritual decay in my life. My lifestyle had opened up the spiritual doors to further mental torment to the point where I could no longer handle it. Every day and every minute was painful. My spiritual wisdom had told me that calling on the name of Jesus would hinder my spiritual progress and that I didn't need a savior because I was the only savior I'd ever need. I didn't care anymore, however. I needed his help. I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Little did I know it was the best thing that could happen. In my desperation, I whispered his name and was flooded with peace I'd never ever known. 
He delivered me in an instant of the torment I'd been under, all the healing I had worked so hard on for years, only to dig myself in a deeper hole. He finished in an instant and gave me peace. Everything I labored so hard for had been in vain because his ways and his sacrifice were all I ever needed. This moment happened three years ago now, and I'm getting baptized today because I love Jesus and as a testament that he makes new all that comes under his covenant. The old has passed away. Behold, I am a new creature in Christ. If anyone was undeserving of God's sacrifice, it was me. But he reminds me in Ephesians 1.4, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. I love this verse because it reminds me it was never up to me or you. No matter who we were or what we were born into, he was going to bring us home to him. I'm forever grateful for that because I know firsthand how lost I'd be without him. Amen, Abby. We'll just have a few questions for you. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving wrath, but by God's unmerited grace through your faith in Jesus Christ that he saved you? Yes. Do you, have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. And will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by the power of his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ to be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Well, upon your testimony and your confession, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're excited to invite Jesse up next to share. Hi, everyone. Uh, so as he said, my name's Jesse, and I'm here today because I've made the decision to accept Christ as my king. I believe that God in his love has given us the free will to either live separated from him or to embrace a life with him. For a while, I wrestled with this choice, but I've come to know the truth that life without God is incomplete. Today, through baptism, I get to publicly declare that my life belongs to Christ. I want to, the world to know that I'm choosing a life dedicated to following him, growing in faith, and trusting for his plan in me. This moment is a symbol of my commitment to live not for myself, but for Christ, who has given me hope, purpose, and a new beginning. Amen, Jesse. Upon hearing your testimony, we're excited to ask you some questions. Number one, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving of wrath, but through God's unmerited grace, he made you alive through Christ? Yes. And have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Will you love, rely, and depend on God's guidance in your life through his word and by his Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ and be on his mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Amen. Well, then it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's our privilege to introduce Davis. He's going to share his testimony. Good morning. Beautiful day. I love the weather. My name is Davis. I was born into a primarily Catholic family. I wasn't really introduced into like God or Christ at all. It was just um, spoken about, but not directly. So I never really knew anything of it. Um, and despite trying to live by the books and do as I was told by friends and family, it just always felt like I was in a constant pursuit of something that was constantly unachievable. Um, midway high, through high school, I had met with a peer, his name was Michael, and we had a really long chat about God and the Bible and life. And I'd always noticed like he was kind of shunned by my peers and people made fun of him for being such a devout follower of Jesus. And when we had that conversation, it was very enlightening to me. And a few days later, he gave me a Bible and a little excerpt in the beginning and one of the highlights of that was he said that everyone has a god-sized hole in their heart and i really felt that was true and uh 
even after that, I still kept pursuing things that were not God and never filled that hole. Um, and so fast forward to today, I have my beautiful wife, Sarah, and her family has reintroduced me to Jesus and God and, and the church. And I started attending Riverside. It was the first one. We just decided to, to pick one and we just stuck with it. We were going to go and check out all the other ones around town and just Riverside spoke to us. So we stayed there. And um, I just, it just felt like there was a constant knocking at my door from my spiritual door. You know, God just kept trying to speak to me and I was ignoring him for a long time. Um, and yeah, despite not understanding, that was a big issue I had. I didn't understand. I didn't know. I felt like I didn't have all the facts. And now despite not understanding, I've decided to surrender myself to Jesus. And Unfortunately, within a few days of that happening, my father passed away. Um, and a few days after that, Sarah and I got married. Um, and I just, I have gratitude that God was patient enough to wait until I had surrendered myself to take my father into his hands and transfer me to, over to Sarah and my new family and a new beginning. Um, and I just, it, it is written that if you abide by the word, you're truly my disciples. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. This baptism, baptism symbolizes my commitment to the pursuit of truth, faith, and obedience to Jesus and the Bible. I will always put God first for the benefit of my wife, my family, and my community. Amen. Thanks, Davis. Well, upon hearing your testimony, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Davis, do you acknowledge that you were once dead in your sin, deserving God's wrath? But through God's unmerited grace, through Jesus Christ and your faith in him, he has saved you. Yes. Awesome. Have you confessed your sin and expressed your repentance to God through faith in Jesus Christ? Yes. And will you rely, uh, love, and depend on God's guidance in your life through reading his word and depending on his Holy Spirit's empowerment? And will you be on Jesus' mission and fellowship with his church? Yes. Well, upon hearing those things, it's our privilege to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, we're going to sing a song now. And I don't know if you noticed the theme, but there is nothing, nothing that Jesus Christ cannot save you from. There is no pit too deep. There is, there is nowhere that you have wandered that's too far for him to save you. And so as we're singing this last song, if you don't know this power, this amazing God and what he's done through his son, Jesus Christ, I just encourage you to, to speak to myself, to Pastor Josh, to someone you came with this morning. We would love to share how you can place your faith in Jesus. And if you haven't been baptized, Pastor Josh and I would love to talk to you about that. We we do these things as, as often as we need to do them. So don't hesitate to reach out if you would like to demonstrate what has happened inwardly in your life. Let's sing together. Stay. 